Hi, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to our very first session here at Georgia Aquarium in our brand new Kaiser Permanente Learning Lab. My name is Diana Rodriguez, and I am excited to offer shark, dentition, and diets for you today. Sharks have inhabited our world ocean for hundreds of millions of years. There are known to be more than 400 species of modern sharks today, and these sharks and rays belong to a larger group of cartilaginous fish known as elasmobranchs. These animals are very important in that they play a vital ecological role as the predator, the apex predator. They are going to help keep the balance of healthy populations. One of the features that people think about when we're talking about sharks is naturally going to be teeth. So let's take a look at a shark jaw and see what we see. Here I have a re replica reef shark jaw and let's take a closer look. What do you notice? Lots of pointy, jagged teeth. But look closer. Did you know that shark jaws have rows and rows of teeth? I wonder why that is. Well, one of the reasons has to do with the fact that sharks, as they are predating, they are going to have teeth that will get worn or broken on the outer edge. And what they're going to do is they're going to spit that out and then one of these other teeth that is behind it is going to flip forward and take its place. How cool is that? Now, when you're looking at the tooth of a shark, there are different parts that we should look at. So let's look at this replica megalodon shark tooth. One of the parts that you're gonna notice is the root structure down here. This is what's going to be what is going to attach to the jawline. The part that is above the jawline is referred to as the crown and that's going to tell you a lot about that shark. So for example, one of the things that it's going to tell you is by looking at the color, it's going to let you know, are you looking at a fossil or are you looking at a modern tooth? To better illustrate this, I have two replica teeth, white shark teeth, and let's look at them. One of them appears to be bright white, which might indicate that it is a modern shark tooth. One of them is darker in color, which likely indicates that it is a fossil. A fossil occurs through a process called permineralization. Have you ever heard of this term? Well, it's a really cool thing that happens as the shark is going to spit out the tooth, it's going to fall to the bottom and it's going to get covered up by substrate hopefully, so that it doesn't get worn down and broken down with weathering and erosion. Over many, many years, the sediment is going to cover and add a lot of pressure to that tooth, and the process of the water filtering down through that sediment is going to carry different minerals to land and to deposit into the pores on the teeth. Depending on what type of mineral is present is going to determine the color. Now, I bet you're wondering what kind of colors fossilized teeth can be. Well, they can range from a bluish gray to a reddish orange to a whitish color, even a green color. Now, another thing that you can learn by looking at a tooth is going to tell you how this animal feeds. So an animal may have long and pointed grasping teeth, like this woebegone shark jaw, or it may have flat teeth. What do you think this is going to indicate? You guessed it, it's going to tell you their predation style. So an animal that has long and grasping teeth like this is going to be an ambush predator that's going to help it grab a hold of their food items so that it can't get away. An animal that has flat or even rounded teeth, like these ones, are gonna use them much like your molars to crush and grind their food. So probably those food, food items are not going to be ones that are gonna get away too quickly, like a clam, a mussel, an oyster, something like that, that they can find on the bottom. 
We do have many different species of shark here at the Georgia Aquarium, and our researchers are going to need to know, and their aquarists are going to need to know a lot about how to properly take care of these animals as responsible stewards. So one of the things that they do is they look at the teeth to tell them what kind of dietary items they need and also to determine the feeding methods that we utilize for these animals. Okay, so now that we've learned about those teeth that are round or flattened, let's go back to those pointy teeth and look at some of those types that do have what is referred to as a serrated edge. Serrated is another vocabulary term that means that it has a jagged edge, and I wonder what that is for. Do you maybe have any utensils at home in your drawer that have a serrated edge and help you with gathering and using of your food? That's right, it's a knife. So that's gonna be used to cut the food items so that when the shark is eating, they're going to be able to take manageable bites. Let's go down to the commissary and visit with my friend Clay from the Animal Health and Nutrition team to see what he has to say on this subject. Well, welcome guys to the commissary. So we've got a selection of different food items that our sharks would be eating based on, like Diana said, and what you guys have learned earlier, what their teeth are like. So we've got a team of researchers who uh, study sharks and different animals around the world, and they bring that knowledge that they learn in the field uh, to apply to our animals in our collection. So Dr. Lisa Hoops is our animal nutritionist, and she studies animals' blood and tissues to see what they're eating in their, in their natural habitat so that we can replicate it here at the aquarium. Um, so like you guys have learned, some sharks have nice pointy teeth, some sharks might have crushing plates, um, and so we've got uh, different things like herring. Herring is a nice sized fish um, that some of our toothier sharks, like a black tip reef shark or a sandbar shark, um, are gonna eat. And then we've got everything to say a crab claw, that's something like a zebra shark might eat that has more of a crushing plate. Um, but then you have to also think about our whale sharks. Our whale sharks, um, they do have teeth, um, but they've got little itty bitty tiny teeth and they're not gonna be chewing on their food. So we have to buy um, special krill. Um, krill is a little itty bitty tiny shrimp. Um, and so we fill a ladle with some krill and we ladle it right into the mouths of the whale sharks and they filter it out of the water and that's how they eat. Now to supplement the diet, just like you guys might take a vitamin or a multivitamin, um, we have to give these guys gel. Now this gel is a special formulated kind of algae and fish based gel and it helps to um, deliver the vitamins that our sharks need to them. Um, so that's a little bit about the sharks dentition and their diets here at Georgia Aquarium. They range from fish to crustaceans and invertebrates. Uh, and this is stuff that you might see on your dinner plate one day. Now that we've talked about a variety of different functions and shapes and types of teeth, teachers, I'd like to challenge you to have your students write a journal entry about what they've learned about teeth and the functionality of them. They can apply this to any type of animal and see how that will work and make their guesstimations about what type of diet, nutrition, or predation methods they utilize. For your lesson plans, teachers, your Georgia Standards of Excellence are going to be S5L1 and SZ4. Now that you've had that chance to tie that directly into your classrooms, students, please be sure to keep that in mind. And let's think about how this is going to apply to aquarists and researchers who are taking care of animals in zoologic institutions like Georgia Aquarium. 